Biology, a case of Cushing's disease. Uh, I took this uh, case from 100 cases in, med in clinical medicine. Uh, I based my knowledge on Davinson's principle and practice of medicine and uh, lecture notes of internal medicine by Dr. Osama Mahmoud. Uh, I extracted the pictures from Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research websites. Uh, history of this patient, 64 year old man, he goes to his GP because he has been increasingly overweight. He is constantly hungry and he is easily bruised. He has difficulty getting up from his chair or climb stairs. He is depressed and he feels uh, that he wakes up too early in the mornings. Uh, he has no previous physical or psychiatric illness. He is a retired miner, lives with his wife, uh, smokes 30 cigarettes per day and drinks 15 units of alcohol per week. On examination, we found that he is overweight, particularly in the abdominal region. He has purple stretch marks on his abdomen and thighs. His skin is, is thin and he is easily he has uh, spontaneous bruises. His pulse is regular and normal, 76 beats per minute. His blood pressure is high, 168 over 104 millimeter mercury. And there is peripheral edema found. Otherwise, his examination, his heart, respiratory, and abdominal systems are normal. His neurological examination is otherwise normal, apart from some weakness in his shoulder abduction and hip flexion. By investigation, uh, we found that his CBC is normal, um, renal tests are normal, we found his uh, liver enzymes and uh, bilirubin level are normal, gamma glutamate transpeptidase level is normal, uh, the only thing was abnormal is glucose, he had hyperglycemia, and by urinary analysis we found glucosuria, chest x-ray picture was normal as well. So what is the most likely diagnosis, explain why? and show how would you investigate and manage this patient how would you approach this patient what do we have here positive findings so we have proximal myopathy stria he's easily and spontaneously bruised so these are all disturbances of the protein metabolism the stria as you can see here um, these are due to rupture of collagen fibers in the dermis with exposure of the vascular subcutaneous tissue. So they appear either red or purple. Um, proximal myopathy, it's just weakness in his, mus uh, his muscles. He cannot get up uh, from his chair. He has, easy, his, uh, he has difficulty in climbing the stairs. He cannot raise his shoulders over to take something from over the counter, for example. He has difficulty and um, uh, muscle pain. He has also trunkal obesity, as you can see here in this picture. He has thin skin, and um, these are basically disturbances of the fat metabolism. There is actually um, fat redistribution and uh, weight gain. Uh, here, the uh, trunkal obesity is seen in this picture from May Foundation. And uh, here you could see also the limbs and the are uh, really thin. He has also depression um, with history of no with no history of previous of previous psychiatric illness. He also has hyperglycemia as seen from the investigation. And uh, this is uh, primarily due to uh, disturbance of the carbohydrate metabolism, where he uh, suffers from uh, what is called um, uh, steroid di steroid diabetes due to insulin resistance. Diagnosis. We could say that this is a Cushing syndrome, uh, but we need to investigate more to confirm and to determine the cause. So what about the classification of endogenous Cushing syndrome? There is ACTH dependent, 80%. There is non-ACTH dependent causes, 20%. And there is a uh, hypercortisolism uh, due to other causes such as um, or referred as uh, pseudo Cushing syndrome. The ACTH dependent, there are either pituitary adenoma secreting ACTH, this is called the Cushing's disease, or an ectopic ACTH syndrome, for example, bronchoid carcinoma. Uh, non ACTH dependent, such as adrenal uh, adenoma or carcinoma, uh, could be ACTH independent macronodular hyperplasia. Uh, could be a uh, pseudo Cushing's syndrome such as alcohol induced. 
Pseudo-Cushing syndrome or a major depressive illness or a primary obesity um, um, which may uh, cause uh, Pseudo-Cushing syndrome. Further investigation, we investigated cortisol level. We found that cortisol is high. <coughs> it is high uh, using um, uh, 24 hours um, uh, sample urine. Um, Usually there is increased urinary conjugation cortisol excretion. Then we investigated ACTH. We wanted to see if it's high or low. We found that it was not low. So this is not a primary adenoma or carcinoma of the adrenal cortex. We found that he's a heavy smoker from the history. So we did an x-ray and found that it is clean. So this is not an... Um, ectopic ACTH secretion, such as, uh, for example, uh, bronchi bronchial carcinoma. We found that um, during history, he did not give us any information about exogenous cortisol intake. So this is not due to, uh, this is not an iatrogenic cause, uh, which is uh, really uh, the most common cause in nowadays clinical practice. Uh, we found that from the history that he's an alcohol drinker, but yet, we found an investigation that he has normal gamma glutamate transpeptidase. So, we can rule out um, pseudo uh, alcohol induced pseudo Cushing syndrome. At the end, we did an MRI and ACTH level. We found that MRI showed microadenoma. We found ACTH is high, evident by dexamethasone suppression test, which I will explain now. This is the MRI. Here's the microadenoma we found in his pituitary gland. Dexamethasone suppression test. This is a suppression test. We inject um, one milligram at, at the beginning uh, at overnight. So this is an overnight dexamethasone suppression test. There is a low dose and high dose. We inject once a, a low dose, one milligram overnight at 11 p.m. for example, and then we measure it at the day at 9 a.m. Uh, the ACTH is elevated and cortisol we found it still high so this gives us an indication that this is a Cushing but if we did a um, high dose overnight um, um, dexa dexamethasone suppression test we will find that the cortisone level is lowered and this will indicate that this Cushing disease this is this is a Cushing disease and this is due to a primary microadenoma Final diagnosis, Cushing's disease, ACTH dependent due to pituitary adenoma. So the management in this case is a transphenoidal surgery. Um, gives us um, about 70% of patients gives uh, remission and uh, about 20% they suffer of a recurrence and they require a lifelong follow up. Key points here. So, patients with rapid onset obesity, they should have endocrine causes excluded because uh, here, if we talk about differential diagnosis for obesity, we would find that it could be genetic, could be environmental, uh, such as excessive food intake. It could be alcohol induced, but we ruled it out here. And the most important cause would be hormonal. It's most serious, so we should exclude it at the beginning. Uh, corticosteroid treatment, as I said, is the commonest cause for Cushing syndrome, iatrogenic cause. Um, patients with severe and rapid onset Cushing syndrome often have ectopic ACTH secretion or cortisol secreting uh, adrenal tumors. Uh, this is just a, a clinical picture of all um, clinical pictures that you may find um, in uh, Cushing's uh, syndrome. Uh, case uh, we found few from these in this case, but the others uh, we found psychosis. There may be cataract or mild exothalamus. We found hypertension. We found central obesity. We found stria. There were decreased skin thickness, wasting and weakness of the muscle, and also there is osteoporosis with easily fracture, uh, bruising, and um, delay in wound healing. Um, you may find menstrual disturbances. Uh, hyperglycemia, you may find um, a compression fracture which in the vertebrae which may lead to loss of height and back pain. Um, it may lead to a peptic ulcer. You can see moon face which is bloated cheeks uh, due to uh, disturbance of fat metabolism. 
um, there might be acne or plethora due to polycythemia and uh, you may see in a female suffering from Cushing syndrome hair thinning or um, hair shittism. Thank you.